Hello, welcome to the Friday, April 27th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I mentioned the new Drupal vulnerability yesterday. At the time, I talked about an exploit that was available at Pastebin. We have now seen some individual exploit attempts using this exploit and variations of it. So this is certainly being used in the wild. Given that this exploit is still a little bit more complex than the old exploit and does appear to require authentication, we don't see quite the volume with it that we have seen with some of the older exploits. Tom, who is our handler today, has actually experienced one of these exploit attempts earlier today against one of his own systems. He's writing it up right now as I'm recording this podcast. So hopefully sometime Friday morning, he'll make his write up live and it talks in more detail about how this particular exploit was used against his systems. And you probably heard of remote management systems for servers like IPMI or Dell's DRAC or HP's integrated light out or ILO. All of these systems have a rich history in vulnerabilities and bad configurations that have been used in the past in order to compromise systems. Now, the latest twist on this happens to hit HP's integrated light out servers. In this case, it appears good old ransomware is used to encrypt disks. Now, the way this works is that an attacker first compromises the server via the integrated lights out system. Now, the integrated lights out system gives an attacker full control over keyboard, mouse, the screen and disk drives. So the attacker here will then remotely mount a CD image that essentially includes the encryption software that's being used to encrypt the disk. In addition, a warning banner is placed on the console that informs the victim that their systems have been compromised. It's not quite clear how the attacker gained access to the integrated lights out system in this case, but often this just happens via stupid default. Now in the past, there have been vulnerabilities in these systems that allowed for an authentication bypass, but in this particular case, there is no evidence how the hacker actually gained access to the system. So this is probably a good opportunity for you to double check the configuration of your systems. These remote management systems, they are extremely powerful and they should never really be remotely accessible from random hosts. The best configuration here typically is to set up a bastion host. So one well-secured, very specific host in your network that administrators have to connect to and only by going via this host, they are then able to connect to any of these remote management consoles. In addition, of course, make sure that you have strong passwords set, adequate logging, and that the software is up to date. And we all remember Meltdown, of course, and how Microsoft initially messed up the Meltdown patch, making exploitation actually easier instead of more difficult by giving all users read and write access to all memory. This was a particular problem for Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2. Now, these are older operating system, but still, of course, widely in use. Now, late in March, Microsoft did release a patch for Windows 7 and Server 2008 R2 to fix this problem. But now we actually have a reliable exploit for this vulnerability. Exploitation isn't quite that easy. As always, when you read and particular write to arbitrary memory addresses, it's easy to mess up stuff and cause blue screens instead of reliable exploitation. But this new reliable exploit does actually take care of most of the things that can go wrong when you're doing so. 
And security company Trustwave found an interesting vulnerability in Western Digital MyCloud EX2 network accessible storage devices. These devices will leak arbitrary files stored on the device if DLNA is enabled. Now, DLNA stands for Digital Living Network Alliance, and it is really a set of standards like UPnP and the like to allow sharing of media on local networks. As far as security goes, this protocol is really more built around streaming movies and such. So it's really more considering DRM that you're not streaming movies that you're not allowed to stream. It's not so much about actually authenticating whoever requests that particular file. Where this goes wrong is if you're using this disk storage device not to store movies, but if you're storing critical files and confidential files on this device, then of course, you would like to authenticate whoever is requesting this uh, file, which Western Digital didn't implement and they're not planning to implement this. Western Digital's advice is to just turn off DLNA. So as long as you're using this device as a pure media streaming device, it's not really a big issue. But uh, if you have your tax return on the same device, you probably want to turn this off or get a second device, which probably shouldn't be a Western digital device in order to store these confidential documents. And you may have heard about Chinese network gear manufacturer CTE, who is in quite a bit of hot water with various agencies currently. Well, there is another issue to have to worry about high speed routers sold by CT in particular to the UK ISP hyper optic all have a hard coded username and password built into the device that allows for unrestricted remote access. This is of course an issue we sadly keep on seeing with all kinds of devices, given that CTE probably is using similar components in devices sold to other ISPs or maybe even sold to consumers directly. It's very likely that this is not the only CTE device using this particular username and password. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.